All right, so in this case, we have n to the fourth minus 49n squared equals 0. Maybe you guys can see why factoring might come into play, because as you're doing synthetic division, you might come up with another factor that looks something like this. Then it's like, well, how am I going to find all the remaining factors and zeros? So in a problem like this, we always, the first step, Jessica, is always when factoring to look for, to factor out the, the greatest common factor, the GCF, right? And in this case, you can see that both of these terms share a n squared. Very good. So I take an n squared, and I have n squared minus 49 equals 0. Now, I gave you a whole set of problems that look similar to this. And Jessica as well, right? Jessica and Jessica. Jessica's are going to team up on this one. Do you remember, what is this factoring technique that we like with this? When we have our two terms and we're factoring them. What's the name? Do you remember? Um, it rhymes with reference. Difference of two squares. You have a great, you have a great group with you that helping you all out. So yes, this is the difference of two squares. All right. Now you can set this up zero prime proper if you want to, and then solve this by zero prime proper. That's fine. Or you can just simply say n squared times n minus seven times n plus seven. All right. I'm not going to go through the whole difference of two squares again because we practice a lot of those problems equals zero. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see I have. Right? Now I have a product of three expressions, all equal to zero. So therefore, I could say, and actually, if you want to be a little bit, we also could do this. You don't have to, but remember, if we're going to talk about multiplicity, you guys see how that would call in common? Right? Now we have three factors, and ooh, that one has a two for multiplicity. The rest of them have ones, but that's how the problem says. So anyway, let's just leave it as n squared. All right, so therefore, we have n squared equals zero, n minus seven equals zero, and n plus 7 equals 0. So therefore, n equals 0, n equals 7, and n equals negative 7. So those should have been your three solutions for that. All right? I will leave it up to you for your discrepancy. Pretty much, M 